In this tutorial, let's focus on how we can position implants here in Plum Megaromex's 3D module. So naturally, first uh, we could have a defined here a panoramic view and also adjusted these cross-sectional views so that we have a good view uh, on the implant side or sides. There are separate tutorials uh, that instruct how we can make this panoramic view and uh, adjust the cross-sectionals. Also, we have a separate tutorial uh, for adding and managing implants. So here in this tutorial, let's just directly add here a default implant in the plan and let's continue with the positioning of it. Firstly, uh, when we are adding an implant uh, to the maxilla, uh, we could um, simply flip it by right-clicking on top of that and selecting flip. So we get it initially in the right direction to start with. Furthermore, uh, we can reposition the implant uh, on any of these uh, slice views by simply uh, grabbing it with our left mouse button down and moving it around. And also uh, for aligning the implant, we can grab on these control points on the implant and change uh, the angulation. If there would be the need to rotate the implant uh, around uh, the vertical axis of the implant, we could open the implant properties, for example, through the object browser here, and we would find this rotation angle. Uh, so we could use this slider in order to make the implants rotate uh, around this vertical axis. So if it would be, for example, a non-symmetrical implant. We could also reposition the implant using this uh, 3D rendered view. So if we uh, select uh, the implant uh, here in the object browser, or uh, if it was active already, we could keep our control and shift buttons down on the keyboard, and we could grab the implant with our left mouse button and move it around. Also, by keeping uh, these control and shift down on the keyboard and using our right mouse button, we could rotate the implant. So it would be possible to reposition the implant also here in the 3D rendered view. But the view that we really recommend uh, for adjusting the positioning of the implant is this implant-centric view. So when we have uh, the implant uh, that we want to reposition activated, so it has these control points here, and it's uh, bolded here in the object browser, uh, we can click here on this implant-like icon, implant-centric view. So this generates us uh, these views that are centered on the implant. So here in the axial view, we can see these two views uh, that we have below. Uh, so this uh, light blue view is parallel uh, to the panoramic curve. So the light blue view uh, we have here, and then perpendicular to that, uh, we have the red view uh, here. And these views uh, always stay centered on the implant. So also now, if we are grab grabbing the implant, and we are uh, repositioning it, uh, these views uh, will always stay uh, centered on the implant. We could also rotate uh, these views around by grabbing this slider uh, above them. So this would allow us uh, to see the bone all around the implant. Here on the slice views, uh, we can also see the relative bone density uh, displayed by this house field unit value at that site uh, where our mouse currently is. But if we would like to still get more information about uh, the relative bone density around the implant, uh, we could also activate this implant verification tool uh, for the currently active implant. So if we open this one, we can see here how the bone around the implant looks like. So firstly here, uh, we have the axial view uh, that we can browse through. Uh, so we can also see in the other views how the axial view moves uh, along the length uh, of the implant. And here uh, we can also uh, rotate uh, these views by dragging with our right mouse button down. So here uh, we have this green view here and perpend perpendicular to that, uh, we have uh, the red view. And also we have this light blue view uh, here uh, that shows uh, like an envelope view around the implant. These two charts here uh, instead show uh, the Hounsfield unit values um, at the implant side. Uh, so firstly, we have this orange area, uh, the inside of the implant, 
and this orange line here shows uh, the relative uh, bone density values, heart field unit values along the length uh, of the implant. Likewise, uh, this purple area here is uh, what is uh, immediately surrounding the implant, and here uh, we can see uh, the heart field unit values of this purple area. Here uh, we have the heart field unit values displayed in this axial view. So what uh, values there are around the implant. Here we can see also the numerical values. So uh, the mean heart field unit value inside uh, the implant. So this area here and then outside of it. And then also the standard deviations for the values. With these sliders uh, we can define what is the range actually that is taken into account in these charts. So both uh, the outside and the inside values. If we would like uh, the bone density uh, to be displayed by pseudocolors, uh, we could uh, activate uh, this box here. And also uh, by clicking here, uh, we could change uh, the coloring uh, if we would like to. So with these pseudocolors, uh, we might uh, be able to better understand uh, the differences in bone densities uh, around the implant. And finally, uh, with these options here, uh, we could change uh, these colors here. So we could change the color of the implant or uh, this inside or outside area. So we would just uh, select here the respective object and we would use uh, this color chart here. If we would have several implants in the plan, uh, we could toggle between the implants uh, by using these next and previous uh, buttons here. So let's then close this tool and let's still uh, take a look at this 3D rendered view. So also this uh, could help us uh, in understanding especially how the implant is positioned from the aesthetics point of view. So we could, for example, here hide uh, the data uh, with this threshold slider. So we would only have here the dental model and uh, the crown. And so uh, we could examine here uh, how the implant uh, would be going through uh, the plant restoration. The rod uh, that we see here is, by the way, the implant extension, and we can modify its dimensions uh, by opening uh, this default setting here. So uh, we could go here, this implant uh, extension uh, properties. So we could uh, both uh, change uh, the length of the implant extension as well as the diameter. So this uh, implant extension helps us in understanding how the implant is positioned, uh, for example, in relation to the opposing teeth. Something else uh, that we can see here are the safety distances. Uh, so if we minimize that uh, 3D rendered view, uh, we can see uh, the safety distance uh, around the implant um, as this uh, shaded uh, rectangle. So what, uh, what we see here is the safety distance implant to implant. And like we see, we can specify it ourselves. So we can determine here uh, how close uh, two implants uh, could be uh, to each other. So if we would have several implants in the plan, we would get an automatic notification if the implant's uh, safety areas are overlapping each other. We can also specify a separate value, safety distance implant to nerve. So if we would have marked uh, a mandibular nerve and uh, we would have this implant uh, in the mandible, we would also get an automatic notification uh, if the safety area of the implant uh, touches the nerve. Let's actually uh, see this in action uh, by copying this implant and faking that there would be the need uh, for a second implant. So if we track them uh, close enough uh, to each other, uh, we can see this automatic uh, notification. And also the safety areas turn red, as well as uh, the backgrounds of the colliding implants here um, in the Optic browser. So this patient doesn't need more implants, but with uh, the two implants, I just wanted to show you one more uh, positioning uh, tool that we can use. So if we are making a case with several implants and there would be the need to align those implants in a parallel way uh, in all three dimensions, we could select as master implant that implant 
uh, that we would like to use as reference uh, for the alignment. And then here in the object browser, we would select all those implants that we would align with this master implant. So in this case, uh, this second implant here. And now uh, we could click on this align implants icon here in the object browser. So this would align those implants in all three dimensions. If we are satisfied with our implant positioning in the plan and we wouldn't like to accidentally uh, move the implant, we could lock uh, the implant here in the object browser. Uh, so we could select the implant uh, that we want to lock in place and then use this lock icon here. So now there wouldn't be the risk uh, that we would accidentally uh, reposition the implant.